There's a question that troubles us all. From the time we are first able to think. And that is, where did we come from? And this question is so compelling that we've invented the science of astronomy. We've discovered these natural laws so that we can learn more about our origin and where we came from. This is what drives us. This is what we want to know. Let's keep looking. Let's keep searching. We have come to be because of the universe's existence. And we are driven to pursue that, to find out where we came from. The joy of discovery, that's what drives us. And these questions are deep within us. Where did we come from? What was before the Big Bang? To us, this is wonderful and charming and compelling. This is what makes us get up and go to work every day. We are, you and I, at least one of the ways that the universe knows itself. It fills me with joy to make discoveries every day of things I had never seen before. To know that we can pursue these answers Where did we come from? I'd like to start, if I may, with Professor Hawking. How did the universe start? With a Big Bang? We observe that distant galaxies are moving away from us. They must have been closer together in the past. It was the beginning of the universe and of time itself. Anything that happened before the Big Bang could not affect what happened after. The poetry of the expanding universe, the poetry of the complexity of life, we're not normally equipped to understand, and science gives it. Science is opening your eyes to the wonderfulness of what's there. Science is opening your eyes to the poetry of the expanding universe. To come to you, Carl Sagan, could you help me by putting into layman's terms what was involved with this Big Bang? The early cosmos was everywhere white hot. But as time passed, the radiation expanded and cooled. Pockets of gas began to grow, began to grow, steadily brightening. We call them the galaxies. It was the beginning of the universe, and of time itself. Anything that happened before the Black Bang could not affect what happened after. The poetry of the expanding universe, the poetry of the complexity of life, we're not normally equipped to understand, and science gives it to us. Big Bang, we had equal amounts of matter and antimatter. And as soon as these met each other, they annihilated together. And this battle played out whilst the universe expanded. In its first moment of existence, they annihilated together. And this battle played out whilst the universe expanded. In its first moment of existence, they annihilated together. To detect the Big Bang, all you need to do is change the channel until you come between two stations. All you need to do is change the channel. About 1% of the snow and noise comes from the Big Bang itself. We're all eavesdropping on the birth pangs of the cosmos. It was the beginning of the universe and of time itself. And this battle played out. Sounds is opening your eyes to the poetry of the expanding universe. And this battle played out whilst the universe expanded in its first minute of existence. It was the beginning of the universe and of time itself.
universe. We are in this universe. The universe is in us. Yes, the universe is in us. We are part of this universe. We are in this universe. The universe itself exists within us. We are part of this universe. We are in this universe. The universe is in us. Yes, the universe is in us. Every atom in your body came from a star that exploded. You are all star us. You are all star us. From a star that exploded. Look up at the night sky. We are part of it. The universe itself exists within us. We are stardust in the highest exalted way, called by the universe, reaching out to the universe. We are stardust in the highest exalted way, reaching out to the universe with these methods and tools of science. Enjoy everything both ways. The tininess of us, the enormity of the universe. The atoms that make up the human body are traceable, are traceable. to the crucible that cooked light elements into heavy elements. These stars went unstable in their later years and then exploded, and then exploded scattering their enriched guts across the galaxy. Look up at the night sky. We are part of it. The universe itself exists within us. We are stardust in the highest exalted way, called by the universe, reaching out to the universe. We are stardust in the highest exalted way, reaching out to the universe with these methods and tools of science. We are stardust in the highest exalted way, in the highest reaching out the universe itself exists within us. surrounded by such complexity, such elegance. The genes of you and me, the genes of you and me, are all made of DNA. We're all made of the same chemical DNA. We are surrounded by endless forms Most beautiful, most wonderful Evolution, the greatest show on earth There is grandeur in this view of life Most beautiful, most wonderful Evolution, the greatest show on earth The history of life can be thought of as a many branch tree. The five kingdoms of life were established early on. Bacteria, protists, amoeba like creatures, fungi, plants, and animals. We find ourselves perched on one tiny twig in the midst of a blossoming tree of life. Perched on one tiny twig of a blossoming tree of life. Only the fittest survive. And that was the key. Natural selection. That was the key. We are surrounded by endless forms. Most beautiful, most wonderful. Evolution, the greatest show on earth. There is grandeur in this view of life. Most beautiful, most wonderful. 
evolution, the greatest show on earth. We are surrounded by millions of other species. Walking, flying, burrowing, stalking, chasing, fleeing, outpacing. Animals strive to reach this one ultimate goal to ensure the survival of the next generation. This one ultimate goal to pass on their genes. That is what life is all about. Is all about. There is grandeur in this view of life as beautiful as wonderful. Evolution, the greatest show on earth. As we look back on the history of life, we see a picture of never-ending, ever-rejuvenating novelty. Those animals may seem to us to be very remote, strange, even fantastic. But all of us alive today owe our very existence to them. exploration is the image of the Earth finally to bloom, bearing the entire human species through the oceans of space and time. Matter flows from place to place and momentarily comes together to be you. Some people find that thought disturbing. I find the reality thrilling. The ancient myth makers knew we're children equally of the earth, the sky, and our tenure on this planet. We've accumulated dangerous evolutionary baggage. We've also acquired compassion for others, love for our children, and a great soaring, passionate intelligence, the clear tools for our continued survival. We must ask ourselves. You are so proud of our accomplishments. What is our place in the cosmic perspective of life? The cosmic perspective of we life. We could be in the middle of an intergalactic conversation, and we wouldn't even know. Are there things about the universe that will be forever beyond our grasp? Are there things about the universe that are? Ungraspable. One of the great revelations of space exploration is the image of the Earth finally to bloom, bearing the entire human species through the oceans of space and time. Matter flows from place to place and momentarily comes together to be you. Some people find that thought disturbing. I find the reality thrilling. At last, to wonder about our origins, star stuff, contemplating the stars, tracing that long path, our obligation to survive and flourish is owed not just to ourselves, but also to that cosmos, ancient and vast, from which we spring. One of the great revelations of space exploration is the image of the Earth finally to bloom, bearing the entire human species 
through the oceans of space and time. Matter flows from place to place and momentarily comes together to be you. Some people find that thought disturbing. I find the reality thrilling. Think of how many stars and planets and kinds of life there may be in this vast and awesome universe. With every century, our eyes on the universe have been opened anew. We are witness to the very brink of time and space. When you are studying any matter or considering any philosophy, ask yourself only what are the facts and what is the truth that the facts bear out. Science is more than a body of knowledge. It's a way of thinking, a way of skeptically interrogating the universe. If we are not able to ask skeptical questions, to be skeptical of those in authority, then we're up for grabs. In all of science, we're looking for a balance between data and theory. You don't have to delude yourself with irony and cherry tales. The same spiritual fulfillment that people find in religion can be found in science by coming to know, if you will, the mind of God. The real world, as it actually is, is not evil. It's remarkable. And the way to understand the physical world is to use science. There is a new wave of reason sweeping across America, Britain, Europe, Australia, South America, the Middle East and Africa. There is a new wave of reason where superstition had a firm hold. Think for a lifetime, think for a lifetime. Cosmology brings us face to face with the deepest mysteries, with questions that were once treated only in religion and myth. The desire to be connected with the cosmos reflects a profound reality. Not in the trivial ways that astrology promises, but in the deepest ways. I can't believe the special stories that have been made up about our relationship to the universe at large. Look at what's out there. It isn't in proportion. Science is more than a body of knowledge. It's a way of thinking. A way of skeptically interrogating the universe. There is a new wave of reason. Sweeping across America, Britain, Europe, Australia, South America, the Middle East and Africa, there is a new wave of reason where superstition had a firm hold. Teach a man no reason, think for a lifetime, think for a lifetime. by what you wish to believe, but look only and solely at what are the facts. Enjoy the fantasy of the thought of the story, but make sure that there's a clear, sharp line drawn on the floor. To do otherwise is to embrace man. There is a new wave of reason sweeping across America, Britain, Europe, Australia. South America, the Middle East and Africa, there is a new wave of reason, where superstition had a firm hold. Teach a man no reason, think for a lifetime, think for a lifetime.